XM Radio Theater presents Hollywood. BSM Spirit Shop, purveyor of spirit wear for all, brings you Benilde St. Margaret's Radio Theater Show, starring Javi Trujillo, Susie Hokinson, and Mr. J. And it's a wonderful life. Gotta make a stop at the spirit shop. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Jordan Spank. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight we bring you one of the season's most inspiring hits, a Liberty Film production that's been nominated for Highest Screen Award. Yes, It's a Wonderful Life. And we present it now with its brand new fine stars, Javi Trujillo, Susie Hokinson, and Mr. J. Javi Trujillo in the role which got him his nomination for Best Dressed in the Night Errant, also starring a kind soul and everyone's pal, Mr. J. And you know and love her and have most likely heard her beautiful singing, Susie Hokinson. It's a Wonderful Life is the drama of a typical American. Might be you, might be me. He dreams of glory. He lives in hopes. He loves and doubts. And only Providence puts a final value on his service to humanity. Our story starts before the war, when life was normal. Shortage was generally unknown. And simple luxuries like BSM spirit wear were abundant. I won't say that's the only reason people said It's a Wonderful Life, but I know from the thousands of letters in our files that people said It's a Wonderful Shop, and they kept right on saying it day after day. In fact, the popularity of BSM Spirit Shop is what makes it possible to present such entertainments as Frank Capra's great production, It's a Wonderful Life, starring Javi Trujillo as George Bailey, Susie Hokinson as Mary Hatch, and Mr. J as Clarence. This is the story of George Bailey, citizen of Bedford Falls, New York. George Bailey, who more than anything under the sun, wanted to see the world, the wonderful, exciting world that lay somewhere beyond the limits of his hometown. Oddly enough, this story does not begin in Bedford Falls. In fact, it doesn't begin anywhere in the world. It begins in heaven where the superintendent of angels has just summoned an apprentice angel named Clarence. Am I really going down to earth, sir? Oh, that's splendid. Yes, there's a very discouraged man down there, Clarence, George Bailey. At exactly 10.45 p.m., uh, earth time, he'll be thinking seriously of ending his life. Oh, dear, dear, his life. Now, I want you to stop him if you can. Oh, sit down down. I'll give you Bailey's case history. Uh, sir, if I should accomplish my mission, may I perhaps get my wings? I've been waiting over 200 years now, and well, people are beginning to talk. Clarence, what's that book? The Adventures of Tom Sawyer, sir. I was reading it when you sent for me. Oh, fine book. Excellent. Well, you do a good job on George Bailey, and we'll see about your wings. Oh, thank you, sir. Now listen, when George Bailey was a boy, two events occurred that you should keep in mind. One was when his younger brother, Harry, fell through the ice and almost drowned. Yeah, Harry, come on! He ought to get up! Oh, George, George, help him! Someone help! George saved him. George? Brother, it fell through the ice. George saved him. Ever since, George had a bad ear. All that icy water. Well, you understand. A, a bad ear. Yes, sir. And the other event came a few months later. George used to work after school in Mr. Gower's drugstore. One day, Mr. Gower's only son dies of influenza. It was a terrible blow. And poor Mr. Gower tried to lose his grief in whiskey. Where you been, George? Mrs. Blaine's called twice. What happened to her prescription? You lost it, didn't you? No, Mr. Gower. Here it is. You lazy good for nothing. Uh, uh, don't you know that Blaine girl's very sick? Uh, Mr. Gower, my ear. You're hurting my sore ear. I'll teach you to loaf, you lazy brat. Mr. Gower, you don't know what you're doing. You put something wrong in those capsules. No, I know you feel bad, Mr. Gower, but look at this bottle. You use this bottle to make up the capsules, and it's poison. Poison? Oh, don't hurt my sore ear again, Mr. Gower. Oh, George, no. 
No, no. It's what you delivered, Mr. Gower. I just wanted to make sure. Oh, George. George. Well, Clarence, that was George Bailey as a boy. When he grew up, he wanted to go to college. But there just wasn't the money. So he worked four years in the Building and Loan Association. B building and Loan Association? Oh, I forgot to tell you. George's father was in the building and loan business. He and George's Uncle Billy. High ideals, low bank accounts. Anyway, George worked for his father and saved enough to see him to university. That summer, though, he was going to go to Europe, got a job on a cattle boat, do a little traveling before college. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. It's hard to realize it's my last night at the old Bailey Borden house. We're sure gonna miss you, George. I'ma miss you too, Pop. Hey, what's the matter? You look tired. Oh, I another tussle with old Henry Potter today. Oh, I thought when you put him on the board of directors, he'd ease up. So did I. Well, I just can't understand a man like Mr. Potter. He can't begin to spend all the money he gets. I guess Potter owns just about everything he wants in Bedford Falls, except our building and loan. That's why he hates us. Hey, George, can I borrow your tuxedo studs? Yeah, help yourself. Where are they? In your suitcase? Well, I'm not taking a tuxedo on a cattle boat, you know? Say, where'd you get that suitcase anyways? Oh, Mr. Gower, a going away present. One of these days, you're gonna see that bag all covered with travel labels. Uh, Italy, Baghdad, San Arcane? You're gonna have a pretty full summer. I'm gonna have a pretty full life. Hey, why don't you come to the dance tonight? What? Be bored to death? I couldn't want a better death. Lots of pretty girls. Hey, I gotta hurry. I wish we could send Harry to college with you, George. Aw, oh, now, we got that all figured out now, Pop. He'll take over my job at the building and loan, work there four years like I did, and then he'll go. He's pretty young for that job. Well, no younger than I was. Maybe. You're born older, George. Huh? George, when you get out of college, I don't suppose you'll come back to the building alone? Uh, now, Pop, I, I just couldn't. I couldn't face being cooped up for the rest of my life in a shabby little office and... Oh, I'm sorry, Pop. I didn't mean that. But this business of nickels and dimes, well, I'd go crazy. I want to do something big, something important. In a small way, we are doing something important, George. In that shabby little office, we help people figure out how they can own their own home. Oh, I know, I know, Pop. I, oh, I just wish I felt, well, I just feel like if I don't get away, I'd bust. You're right, boy. You get yourself an education, then get out of here. Pop, do you want a shock? I think you're a pretty great guy. Well, thanks, George. I'm glad to hear it. Uh, look, uh, why don't you go over to Harry's dance? You'd have a good time. Well, I don't know. Maybe I will drop in. Maybe I will at that. So, George Bailey went to the dance. Is that important, Joseph? Why it was at the dance, he met Mary Hatch. Oh. And three hours later, he was walking her home. George and Mary were feeling pretty good, Clarence. As a matter of fact, wonderful. Buffalo gal, can't you come out tonight? Can't you come out tonight? Can't you come out tonight? Buffalo gal, can't you come out tonight? And dance by the light of the moon. Well, hot dog, just like an organ. At least. Gee whiz. You know, if it wasn't me talking, I'd say you're the prettiest girl in town. Well, why don't you say it? Well, I don't know. Maybe I will say it. How old are you anyways? Eighteen. Eighteen? Too young or too old? No, no, just right. Your age fit you. Well, hey, look where we are. Oh, the old Granville house. Yeah, I got it through a rock. Oh, no, don't. I love that old house. No. Don't you know about deserted houses? You make a wish and then you throw a rock. George, but it... It's such a lovely old place. I wish I lived there. In there? Oh, I wouldn't live in there if I was a ghost. Now watch, watch this. Here we go. How about it, huh? Good shot, huh? Broke a window, huh? What'd you wish, George? Oh, I don't know. Not just one wish. A whole hatful, Mary. I'm shaking the dust off this crummy little town off my feet, and I'm gonna see the world. Uh, Italy. 
Greece, the Parthenox, the Colosseum. And then, and then I'm gonna come back here and go to college and see what they know. And then I'm gonna build things. I'm gonna build airfields and skyscrapers a hundred stories high and bridges a mile long. And then I'm gonna, well, hey, <laughs> hey Mary, what do you want, huh? You want the, you want the moon? Well, all you gotta do is say the word and I'll throw a lasso around it and pull it down. Okay, the moon, I'll take it. Then what? Then what? Well, then you could swallow it and it'd dissolve like an aspirin, you know? And the moonbeams would shoot out of your fingers and at the end of your hair and it, uh... <laughs> you think I'm talking too much? Yes, why don't you kiss her instead of talking her to death? How's that? Uh, youth is wasted on the wrong people. Hey, hey, just a minute, mister. Come on back here and I'll show you some kissing that'll... George! George! Well, hey, Uncle Billy, look, I'm a kiss Mary, watch. George, get in the car, quick! Your father's had a stroke! What? What? My father's had a... George, get in. Hurry. Well, George's father died that night, Clarence. So, of course, George couldn't go to Europe. But that fall, just as he was ready to leave for college, the directors of the building and loan had a meeting. They were going to appoint a successor. What was that you said, Mr. Potter? I said, as long as Peter Bailey is dead, let's dissolve the building alone. We don't need it. Now, wait a minute. You wait a minute. Peter Bailey was not a businessman. Ideals without common sense can ruin a town. What do we get? A discontented, lazy rabble instead of a thrifty working class. Now, hold on, Mr. Potter. Wait a minute, I don't like this. Oh, oh, I meant no disrespect, George, uh, but... Now, wait a minute here. Why my father ever started this cheap, penny-ante building and loan, I'll never know. But just remember this, Mr. Potter, that this rabble you're talking about, they do most of the working and paying and living and dying in this community. Well, is it too much to have them work and pay and live and die in a couple of decent rooms and a bath? Yeah. Anyway, my father didn't think so. People were human beings to him. But to you, a warped, frustrated old man, they're cattle. Well, in my books, Mr. Potter, he died a much richer man than you'll ever be. I'm not interested in your book, George. I'm talking about the building and loan. You're talking about something you can't get your fingers on, and it's galling you. That's what you're talking about. Well, this town needs this measly one-horse institution. If only ha to people can borrow a few dollars without crawling to you. Now, come on, Uncle Billy. Yeah. What happened, George? Yeah, we heard a lot of yelling. Boy, oh boy, you should have heard, George. Well, they're in there voting us out of the business. Who cares? I can get another job. I'm only 41. 45. Will you get out of here, George? You missed your boat trip. Do you want to miss college, too? George! George! They voted Potter down. <gasps> we're still in business. Well, they were still in business! But they've got one condition, George. They've appointed you to take your father's place. Uh, appointed me? But I'm going to college. Look, this is my last chance. Uncle Billy's your man. But, George, you've got to take it. The vote with Potter otherwise. They said so. I know. George Bailey didn't go to college. That's right, Clarence. He gave his college money to Harry. Harry went instead. But, but what about the pretty girl? You know, Mary. Oh, George saw her every now and then. Not very often, though. Because Mary went away to school, too. Anyway, George waited four more years for Harry to come back and take over the building and loan. He could still see the world. He planned to work in the oil fields in Venezuela. Except when Harry came home... He wasn't alone. There was a girl with him, his wife. George? I'm out here on the porch, Mother. I just thought I'd get some air. Hello, Mom. Well, how do you like your new sister-in-law? Oh, she's swell. Looks like she can keep Harry on his toes. Yup, keep him out of Bedford Falls anyways. What do you mean? Well, Ruth's father, he, he's got a wonderful job for Harry up in Buffalo. Buffalo? Well, that means you... Yeah. You can't. Yeah. George, did you know that Mary Hatch is back from school? Hmm? Yeah, yeah. Nice girl, Mary. Mm-hmm. Oh, stop that grunting. Mm-hmm. Give me one good reason why you shouldn't call on Mary. Well, Sam Rainwright. Sam's crazy about Mary. Well, she's not crazy about him. Well, how do you know that? Did she discuss it with you? 
And besides, Sam's away in New York. And all's fair in love and war? Oh, I see. Okay, Mother, I think I'll go out and find a girl and do a little passionate necking. Oh, George. Goodbye, Mrs. Bailey. By the way, do you want any books from the library? Library? George? George, you go and see Mary. Do you hear? George, is that you out there? Oh, hello, Mary. Well, aren't you coming in? Well, I just happen to be passing by. Oh, I thought you were picketing. Have you made up your mind? How's that? Have you made up your mind? Well, about what? About coming in. Your mother just phoned and said you were on your way over to pay me a visit. My mother just phoned? What does she mean? I just happen to be passing by, that's all. I didn't... Well? Well, I'll, I'll come in for a minute. But I didn't tell anybody I was coming here. A fella can't go out walking nowadays without... <laughs> When'd you get back? Tuesday. Where'd you get that dress? Do you like it? It's all right. Well, no point in standing here on the porch. Come on in. Well, I still can't understand it. I didn't tell anybody I was coming here, you know? Would you rather leave? No, no, I don't want to be rude. Let's sit down for a while. It's nice about your brother and Ruth, isn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's all right. Well, don't you like her? Well, of course I like her. She's a peach. Oh, it's just marriage in general you're not enthusiastic about, hmm? No, no, marriage is all right for a lot of people. All right for Harry, Sam Rainwright, and you. For Sam and... Mary! Who's there? It's George Bailey, Mother. What's he want? I don't know. What do you want? M me? Not a thing, not a thing. I just came in to get warm. He is making violent love to me, Mother. You just tell him to go right back home. Sam said he'd call you from New York tonight, didn't he? I guess so. How about some music? But your mother needn't... I don't know. I didn't come here to... What did you come here? I don't know. You're supposed to be the one with all the answers. You tell me. Oh, why don't you go home? I don't know why I came here in the first place. Good night. Good night. Mary! Mary, the telephone, Mary! I'll tell you, the way you're shouting, you think that... You think what? Mary! All right, I'll get it! George, on your way out, would you mind turning off the photograph? Well, I'd be happy to. Doggone crazy song. Hello? Sam? Mary! Jeez, it's good to hear your voice again. How are you, Sam? Oh, I forgot my hat. Hee-haw! What? Oh, I was just talking to an old friend of yours, George Bailey. Old Mossback George? Old Mossback George. Well, put him on. I'll talk to him, too. Wait one second. George! He doesn't want to speak to George! He does so. He asked for him. Did you call me? Because if you... You know, I'm in a hurry. I gotta... Sam wants to talk to you. Oh. Oh, hiya, Sam. Hey, a fine pal you are. Trying to steal my girl? What do you mean? Nobody's trying to steal anybody's girl. Here, Mary, take the phone. No, no, wait, wait, George. Uh, I want to speak to you both. Tell Mary to get in the extension upstairs. He says for you to get on the extension upstairs. I can't. Mother's on the extension. I am not! We can both hear, George. Just put your head a little closer. What? There. That's better. We're... we're listening, Sam. Well, I have a big deal coming up that's gonna make us all rich. George, you remember that time you told me you read someplace about making plastics out of soybeans? Soybeans? Uh, so soybeans, yeah. Well, my father checked into that, and George, see, and now he's going to put up a factory. How do you like that? Factory, huh? Now, here's the point, George. I, I may have a job for you. <laughs> that is, unless you're still married to that broken down building and loan. <laughs> oh, Mary. Uh, I'm here. Would you tell that guy that I'm giving him the chance of a lifetime? Do you hear? He says, it's the chance of a lifetime. Give me that phone. Here's George again, Sam. George! Now you listen to me, Mary. 
I don't want any plastics, I don't want a job, and I don't want to get married, ever, to anyone. You understand that? I want to do what I want to do, and you're not going to trick me. And you're... Mary. George. Oh, Mary, darling. I love you, Mary. Well, well. So George Bailey and Mary Hatch were... Yes. George and Mary were married. Hmm. And they started off their honeymoon in Ernie Bishop's taxi cab. Hey, where are you two going in this here now honeymoon? We're gonna shoot the works, Ernie. A whole week in New York, a whole week in Bermuda, the highest hotels, the oldest champagne, the hottest music, and the prettiest wife. So you're finally getting, getting out of Bedford Falls, huh? Then what? Well, then what, honey? After that, who cares? Well, that does it. Hey, you know, Mrs. Bailey, I haven't kissed you yet. Hey, George, there's something funny going on over there. Look, look over at the bank. Huh? Pull over a minute, will you, Ernie? George, let's not stop. Please, let's go straight to the station. Well, I'd better see what this is. I'll be right back. George, please. George! In a few moments, we'll return to the second act of It's a Wonderful Life, starring Javi Trujillo, Susie Hoganson, and Mr. J. Meanwhile, here is our night errant reporter, Phil Smith, looking very smart too, may I say. Well, thank you very much, Miss Kennedy. You know, after seeing Bill Cheney strut the hardwoods in his Jordan 1 retros, I just had to rush out and buy something new. Picturing that wall of shoes was just too much for my self-control. Well, you look stunning, Phil. Thank you again, Miss Kennedy. Well, I know Bill spends a lot of time with the BSM sports programs, and I hear that you've been dirtying up your cleats on the soccer field. Tell me about what sports are happening. I understand that you guys are having an amazing season. Oh, yeah, it's been going splendidly. We didn't lose one game. Oh, you won every game? No, we didn't lose one game. We tied that one. The rest of them we lost. But I hear the varsity girls soccer team had a great year. Section champions. The football and volleyball season is just getting started. I have a feeling this will be a great year for BSM Sports. Well, naturally. But really, Miss Kennedy, when people come to the Haven Center for our games, I wonder how many are really there just to see Bill's shiny shoes. They'd make any clothes conscious man sit up and take notice. I'll bet you think so too, Miss Kennedy. Well, Phil, Bill's kicks are just my style. It's amazing the effect it has on a man when he wears them. Some guys seem to have that ready to fly look. You know what I mean? Well, I know what you have in mind. No wardrobe is complete without the right accessories. Sports and screen stars refuse to go without the perfect combo. That must be the reason BSM Spiritwear continues to be a studio standby, no matter how often other styles change. Well, that's what Mr. Cheney told me. He says he can always count on a perfect fleece to set him apart, and the selection of overalls is unmatched. The senior girls always say they can depend on it when homecoming comes around. Is it true that BSM Spirit Shop has started selling face masks? It sure is, Miss Kennedy. Here's what Dr. Skinner has said about them. I cover my face with BSM face mask and work it well. It gives me a professional and spirited look. Wearing BSM face masks does make skin lovelier. Recent tests by Ms. Novak's physical science lab proved it. In three out of four cases, complexions become softer and smoother in just a short time. A mask and sweatshirt combina combination makes everyone so attractive. I wish everyone who hasn't tried it would begin using it yesterday. That's sound advice, Phil. When nine out of 10 administrators recommend our spirit shop, you know it has to be good. So why not try BSM Apparel, found exclusively at the spirit shop. We pause now for station identification. This is CBS. The what are you looking for? What do you need? Something with style and flair guaranteed. Going to the game, wanna look to make you pop? Gotta make a stop at the spirit shop. Gotta make a stop at the spirit shop. Act two of It's a Wonderful Life, starring Javi Trujillo as George Bailey, Susie Hokinson as Mary, and Mr. J as Clarence. Well, we're back in heaven again, where the superintendent of angels is reviewing the case history of a mortal named George Bailey. Clarence, the apprentice angel, is very eager to depart on his mission to Earth. Oh, poor George Bailey. Oh, he's certainly in desperate trouble, Joseph. I'll, I'll go to him at once. Now you sit down, Clarence. Sit down. We're nowhere near the point where George Bailey's thinking of taking his life. We're not? Now, uh, where were we? 
Oh, yes, yes. George and Mary had just started out on their honeymoon when they ran smack into the financial panic of 1932. In the waiting room of the building and loan, a hundred frantic people were clamoring for their savings. Hey, what's going on, Uncle Billy? What's happened to all those people out there? Uh, this is a pickle, George. All I know is the bank called in our loan an hour ago. I have to hand over all our cash. Holy mackerel. The whole town's gone crazy. Bank's in the same spot we are. Well, our charter. What about our charter? Our charter says we have to stay open till 6 p.m. And the state can take away our license if we don't. How can we stay open until 6 without any money? George, where are you going? I'll just talk to those people. Come on. Please, please, folks, not just a minute. Uh, just a minute now, please. How about our money, George? Where's our money? Uh, uh, come on now, please. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Now listen to me. Now you're thinking of this place all wrong. The money's not here. Uh, wait a minute, let me tell you something. Your money's in the people's houses, in the Kennedy's house, and the McLaren's house, and in your house, and in a hundred others. Now what are you gonna do, foreclose on them? I got $240 in shares. Now let me have it. Oh, all right, all right, Charlie. Now you'll get your money in 60 days. 60 days? Well, well, now that's what you all agreed to when you bought your shares. I got my money. Whoa. Old man Potter's taking over the bank. He'll pay you 50 cents on the dollar. Let's all take our shares to Potter. Half is better than nothing. Oh, wait a minute. Please, folks. I beg you, don't do this. If Potter gets a hold of your shares, he'll be owning this building and loan. He's got the bank, he's got the bus line, he's got the department stores, and now he's after us because he wants to keep you living in the shacks and paying the kinds of rent he decides to charge. Now we can get through this thing all right, but we got to stick together. We have to have faith in each other. My husband's out of work, we need money. I've got doctor's bills to pay. I can't feed my kids on faith. Yeah. How much do you need? We still have some money. Mary, hey Mary. Here it is, George. You told me to hold on to it. Would have made a nice honeymoon. Bought furniture, too. Now, wait a minute. Whoa, listen, I got $2,000. All right, Charlie, now how much you need? $240. Now, Charlie, now listen, just enough to tide you over. I said $240. Uh, okay, okay. Uncle Billy, give Charlie $240. All right, Ed, now, now how much just to get by? Well, $20, I suppose. Well, now you're talking. Uh, now, Mrs. Thompson, how about you? $20 will do me. Good, good. $20, Uncle Billy. Now pay it back when you can now. Already pay it back. All right, who's next? Look, look at the clock, look! Five seconds, four seconds, three, two, one. Oh, six o'clock, we made it. Lock that door, Eustace, quick. Got it. Oh boy, we're still in business, Uncle Billy. And we've even got two bucks left, huh? George, there's a phone call for you. Okay, and then call my wife, will you? She's probably over at her mother's. Mrs. Bailey's on the line. Well, I don't want Mrs. Bailey. I want my wife, Mrs. Yeah, Mrs. Bailey, that's my wife. Well, give me the phone, will you? Hey, Mary, listen, Mary. I'm sorry, I... Hmm? Well, come home. Well, what home? Well, 320 Sycamore. Well, what? Well, who, whose home is that? Well, Mary, how can I? Well, sure, sure thing, I'll be right there. Clarence, guess what 320 Sycamore was? His mother-in-law's house, huh? Oh, <laughs> no. Number 320 Sycamore was the old Granville house. The one George threw rocks at and made wishes. Yes, sir, that's where they spent their honeymoon. That's where they first started housekeeping. And they were still living there two years later when old man Potter asked George to stop by over at his office. Sit down, George, sit down. Have a cigar. Thank you, sir. George, you're a young man, married, making, say, $40 a week at the building and loan? 45. 45. And now, if you were some ordinary yokel, I'd say you were doing fine. But George Bailey is intelligent, ambitious. He hates the building and loan almost as much as I do. He's been dying to get out on his own ever since he was born, but he's trapped. Trapped into frittering his life away, playing nursemaid to a lot of garlic eaters. Do I paint a correct picture, George, or do I exaggerate? Well, what's your point, Mr. Potter? My point is, you're the only man in town who's licked me. George, I want to hire you. 
manage my affairs. I'll start you out at $20,000 a year. $20,000 $20, a year? Are you sure you're talking to me? I'm George Bailey, remember? Of the building and loan, remember? Yes, George Bailey, whose ship has just come in, providing he has sense enough to climb aboard. But, but what about the building and loan? Confound it, man! I'm offering you a three-year contract at $20,000 a year! Isn't it a deal or isn't it? No. No, the answer's no, doggone it. And if you offered me a million dollars to stay around this town and play stooge for you, the answer'd still be no. Now leave me alone and don't bother me. George, what did Mr. Potter want? Oh, it's nothing. He just talked and talked. Nothing. Ah, oh, gee, Mary Hatch. Mary, why in the world did you ever marry a guy like me anyways? <laughs> to keep from being an old maid. Oh, I was gonna see the world. I was gonna build things. I was gonna give you the moon. But what have I given you? I mean, what have I given you? Not a new dress. Not for months. Well, gee whiz, Mary, I feel awful. So do I. Mornings, especially. You could have married Sam Rainwright. Anybody else in town. I didn't want to marry anybody else. I want my baby to look like you. You you didn't even have a honeymoon. I promised you a... You... Wait, you, you what? My baby. You... You're... Well, Mary. Mary, you mean you're on the nest. Well, Mary had her baby, Clarence. A boy. <laughs> you don't say. Then she had another one. A girl. Well, what do you know? And night after night, George would come home late from the office. Things weren't good with the building and loan. Potter was really bearing down on him. Then came the war. Well, Mary had another baby by then. Oh. But she still had time to help out in the USO. Uncle Billy sold war bonds, and George's brother, Harry, became a real hero. Shot down 15 planes. But, but George, what about George? Well, George was 4F. His bad ear. He was an air raid warden. On VE day, he wept and prayed. On VJ day, he wept and prayed again. We're, uh, we're getting pretty close to today, aren't we, sir? Yes, Clarence. You now know almost everything you have to know about George Bailey, except what happens that finds him down there at this moment, wanting to die. Well, sir? Well? Well, today's the day before Christmas. Uh, Earth time. George is pretty excited. Hey, Tilly, Eusis, come on and look at the paper. Harry Bailey, decorated by the president, my kid brother, the Congressional Medal of Honor. Gosh, George, gosh. What do you think about that? The 15 Japanese planes. And the last one he got was just about to dive into a transport, loaded with soldiers. You know what that means? Well, he saved lives, hundreds of lives. Oh, gee whiz. Where's Uncle Billy? Onto the bank, George. Oh. He went to deposit that $8,000. Good, good. Who's that there in the office? It's the man again. The bank examiner? Oh. Good afternoon, Mr. Carter. Hey, uh, Tilly, get the books for Mr. Carter, will you? Mm -hmm. You know, that's my brother's picture there, Mr. Carter. He shot down 15 points. Well, well. Mr. Henry Potter. Come to the bank to deposit some more loot, eh? Ah, uh, you old fool, and... How do you like the news in the paper, Mr. Potter? <laughs> you just can't keep those Baileys down now, can you? Let me see that newspaper. Here. Sorry I can't shot you, old thief. I gotta make a deposit. <laughs> oh, here you are, Horace. Deposit slip, bank book, and a very Merry Christmas to you. You too, Mr. Bailey. Say, you've forgotten something, haven't you? <laughs> Horace, I've forgotten things all my life. Get a wiggle on, boy. But, Mr. Bailey, where's the money? What? What's that? You want to make a deposit? Certainly, I, certainly I want to. Well, it's customary to bring the money with you. It's gone. It's gone. Where did I put it? Where, where did I put that money? A terrible thing, Clarence. Terrible. Uncle Billy couldn't find the money because the envelope with the $8,000 was folded up in that newspaper he gave to old man Potter. 
I, I just don't know what happened to it, George. I, I just don't know. $8,000, Uncle Billy. The bank examiner's here, and it's not our money. It belongs to the depositor. George, what are we going to do? We traced every step I took, and we can't stand here in the street. Oh, you sure you didn't put the envelope in your coat pocket? I, uh, I think so. Maybe, maybe. Oh, I'm no good to you, George. I'm no good. Listen to me. Listen to me. Think. Think, will you not try and think? Uh, I can't think anymore. George, I can't think anymore. I can't. Where's that money, you silly old fool? You know what this means? It means bankruptcy and scandal and prison. Oh. One of us is going to jail. Well, it's not going to be me. Now get out of my way. I'm going home. George, what's wrong? You haven't said a word since you came home. And that banging on the piano, does she have to just keep playing that same piece over and over again? I have to for the Christmas party, Daddy. What is it, dear? Another hectic day? Yeah, yeah, another red leather day for the Baileys. Dad, the Murphy's got a brand new car. You should see it. Oh, uh, well, what's the matter with our car? Isn't it good enough for you? I'm sorry, Dad. I only... Run upstairs, please. See if Zuzu's all right. Okay, Mom. What do you mean, see if Zuzu's all right? Now, now, what do you mean? Oh, she caught a little cold coming home from school. Didn't put up. Well, what is it? What do you mean, a cold? George, the doctor said it was nothing serious. The doctor? Was the doctor here? Well, I thought he'd better look at her. This old drafty house? It's a wonder we don't all have pneumonia. Might as well be living in a refrigerator. Why do we have to live here and stay around this measly, crummy old town? What's happened? Well, everything's happened. You call this a happy family? Why do we have all these kids? Daddy, how do you spell frankincense? Oh, I don't know how you spell it. Ask your mother. Where are you going? Upstairs to see Zuzu. Hello? Oh, thank you, Mrs. Welch. I'm sure she'll be all right. Who's that? It's Zuzu's school teacher. What? Oh, yes, the doctor says she'll be fine tomorrow. Here, give me that phone. George, please. Mrs. Welch, this is Mr. Bailey. Well, say, what kind of teacher are you anyways? Well, what do you mean sending her home like that, just half naked? Do you realize she probably ended up with pneumonia just because of your stupidity? Well, now, maybe my kids aren't the best catch kids in town, but at least... Hello? Hello? Janie, will you stop playing that lousy piano? Now cut it out. Stop it. <coughs> George, for heaven's sake, what's wrong with you? I I'm sorry, Janie. I'm sorry, Mary. I've, I've just got to get out of here. So that's it, George. You're short $8,000 in your account, say? Eh? Please, Mr. Potter. I'll pay any sort of bonus. If you still want the building loan, I'll... You say it was lost. Have you notified the police? No, sir. I haven't done that yet. Harry's homecoming's tomorrow. Why come to me? What about your friend, Sam Wainwright? Well, I can't get a hold of him. He's in Europe. What kind of security would I have, George? What collateral? Oh, yes, sir. I have some life insurance here, a $15,000 policy. Mm. What's your equity in it? $500. <laughs> you want $8,000? You once called me a warped, frustrated old man. What are you but a warped, frustrated young man, crawling on your hands and knees for help? Why don't you go to that riffraff you love so well? Ask them to help? Well, I'll do anything, Mr. Potter. Please. Please help me, my wife and kids. I'm calling the district attorney. You know something, George? <laughs> You're worth more dead than you are alive. Now get out of here. Get out! And all the time, Potter had the $8,000 in his desk drawer. It's still there, Clarence. But where is George, sir? Where? Well, he went over to Martini's Cafe. He's had a couple of drinks, Clarence. He's just standing there, sort of in a daze. Oh, God. God, dear heaven, and uh, I'm not a praying man, but if you're up there and, and you can hear me, well, please show me the way. Uh, I'm at the end of my rope. I uh, Show me the way, God. 
Mr. Billy! Uh, are you all right? Just don't drink anymore, Mr. Billy. Please, you don't feel good. Bailey? Did you say Bailey? Which Bailey? This gentleman is Mr. Bailey. George Bailey. George Bailey, yeah. Uh. And the next time you talk to my wife like that, you'll get worse. It isn't enough that she slaves teaching her stupid kids how to read and write. You gotta ball her out. You get out of here, Mr. Welsh. You hit my best friend. Get out! All right. <laughs> I'll go. Mr. Bailey, you okay? Who was that? Mr. Welsh, but don't worry. He don't come in this place no more. I'll get something for your face. It's bleeding. I'm all right. Let me alone. No, please don't go away, Mr. Bailey. Please. Let me alone. Well, George left Martini's Cafe five minutes ago, Clarence. He's at the river now, on the bridge, looking at the water. Are you ready, Clarence? <laughs> all ready, sir. Very well. Save George Bailey's life, and you'll get your wings. My wings? Oh, thank you, Joseph. George! George Bailey! Get away from that bridge! Do you hear me? George! George! In just a moment, we'll bring you Act 3 of It's a Wonderful Life, starring Javi Trujillo, Susie Hokinson, and Mr. J. Miss Jordan Spanks, aside from being our hard-working producer, rumor has it that you're a lovely singer, and you even made it into the Red Notes, BSM's a cappella group. Yes, well... I love to sing, Miss Kennedy, but most of all, I enjoy the feeling I get from the audience. That's interesting. I used to save all my allowance to go to every concert I could of one of my favorite singers, Billie Eilish. Oh, how could you keep track of all that money? I struggle with that myself. Well, Miss Kennedy, it's something that I, as a young girl, struggled with a lot. But thanks to those lovely teachers at the BSM Math Resource Center, math is no longer a daunting task, but a joyous endeavor. You have got to be kidding me. Didn't it make you feel foolish to ask for help? Oh, not at all, Miss Kennedy. The teachers at the Resource Center make it comfortable and understandable, meeting you at your level, any level at all. Wait, did you say any level? Any level. Any level? Yes, any level. Any level? I'll get you, and I'll make it look like an accident. Okay. Back to what I was saying. The Math Resource Center will have you at the top of your math game in a jiffy. Oh, that sounds good. And they might even be able to help you with the chicken quiz. Luminous Patra's chicken quiz. Sometimes you're looking for a sign and go off on a tangent. Sometimes the lesson's so obtuse, how will I ever plan for rent? But there's a crew that's here for you if you're feeling in the dumps. You got a quiz, they know their shiz, just watch as your grade jumps. The Math Resource Center, if math gives you a fright. The Math Resource Center, is it cute or is it right? The Math Resource Center, if there's something you don't know, then it's time to hop to the atrium's top. You really ought to go, you really ought to go. Of it's a Wonderful Life, starring Javi Trujillo, Susie Hokinson, and Mr. J. Numb with despair, convinced, as Mr. Potter says, that he's worth more dead than alive, George Bailey stands on a bridge staring at the dark and frigid water below. Suddenly, there's a splash. Help! Help! I'm drowning! Help! Help! No, that's not George. It's Clarence, the apprentice angel. And there goes in George after him. Hmm. It's a few minutes later now, and in the bridgekeeper's shack, George and Clarence are drying off. You both sure you're all right? You want a doctor? No, I'm all right. Oh, I'm fine. This underwear, <laughs> I didn't have time to get anything more stylish. My wife gave me this on my last birthday. I passed away in them. You what, mister? Oh, I see Tom Sawyer's drying out, too. Hmm? Who? My book. I left in such a hurry, I brought Tom Sawyer with me. How'd you happen to fall in? Oh, I, I jumped in. I jumped in to save you. Jumped in to save me? Well, I did, didn't I? You didn't go through with it, did you? Go through with what? Suicide. Uh, it's against the law to commit suicide around here. 
Yeah, it's against the law where I come from, too. Where do you come from? Heaven. Oh, that's very funny. Your lips bleeding? Yeah, yeah, I got a busted John answer to a prayer. Oh, no, no, no. I'm the answer to your prayer. How do you know my name? Oh, I know all about you. Who are you supposed to be, anyways? Clarence Oddbody, AS2. Clarence Oddbody? What's the AS2 for? Angel, second class. Hey, hey, I'm getting out of here. You might need a doctor, but I do. Cheerio, my good man. Look here, why do you want to save me? Because I'm your guardian angel, George. Okay, I see. Well, you look about the kind of angel I'd get. What happened to your wings? No, I haven't won my wings yet. That's why I'm an angel second class. Oh, I see. But you can help me earn them, George, by letting me help you. Oh, uh-huh. Well, you don't happen to have 8,000 bucks, do you? Oh, no, no. We don't use money in heaven. Oh, that's right. I keep forgetting. Well, it comes in pretty handy down here, bub. Oh, tut, tut, tut. I found it out a little late. You know, I'm worth more dead than I am alive. You mustn't talk like that. Joseph will never give me my wings if you keep feeling that way. You, you just don't realize what you've done for your folks. Why, if it hadn't been for you... Yeah, if it hadn't been for me, everybody would be better off. My wife, my kids, and my friends. Oh, this is not going to be so easy. They'd all be better off if I'd never been born. W what did you say? I said, I wish I'd never been born. G George, that's wonderful. Wonderful what? The idea that you've just given me. Well, you've got your wish. You've never been born. Never been born? Exactly. No worries. No $8,000 to get. Nothing. You just simply don't exist. <laughs> all right. All right. OK, all right. George. <laughs> I can do things, strange things. I can show you the world, George, the way it would be if you hadn't been born. Hey, wait a minute, this ear of mine. Hey, say something else in this bad ear. You don't have a bad ear anymore. Oh, I don't think you're concentrating, don't you see? You're not the George Bailey you think you are. You're, well, you're nobody. Well, that's the doggone thing, my ear. George, your lips stopped bleeding? Yeah. Hey, hey what's happened around here? What is this, anyways? Oh, I need a drink. That's what I need. What about you, Angel? You want a drink? Well, I, I don't quite know. Come on. We'll go as soon as these clothes dry. The clothes are dry, George. Hey, so they are. Well, that's funny. Well, let's get dressed, and we'll stroll on over to Martini's, and... Oh, I'm sorry. I'll stroll. You fly. Oh, no. I don't have my wings. Don't have your wings. That's right. I forgot that again. Well, a couple of drinks, and we'll both fly. What do you have, fellas? Uh, say, Nick, where's the boss? Where's Martini? Look, wise guy, I'm the boss. See? Okay, well, double scotch, quick, will you? What's yours? You know what I just love? Some mulled wine. Huh? Heavy on the cinnamon and light on the cloves. Off with you, my lad, and lively now. Hey, look, mister, we serve hard drinks in here for men who want to get drunk fast. And we don't need any characters around here to give the joint atmosphere. Am I clear, or do I need to slip you my left for a convincing? Oh, no, no, just give him the same as I ordered. He's okay. Mm-hmm. Two double scratches. What's about this place? It's all changed. All of Bedford Falls has changed. You're having your wish, George. You've never been born. Oh, there'll be lots of things you've never seen before. Oh, good. Somebody's just made it. Made what? Every time a bell rings, it means that some angel's got his wings. What did you just say? Oh, look, Clarence, I don't think you better be talking about angels around here. Don't they believe in angels? Yeah, yeah, they believe in them, but, you know. Then why should people be surprised when they see one? Oh, don't mind him, bartender. He's just a little fella never grew up. How old are you anyways, Clarence? Well, next May, I'll be 293. All right, that does it. Out you two pixies go. Through the door, out the window. Look, Nick, where's Martini? Will you tell me? And that's another thing. Where'd you get off calling me Nick? And quit asking about Martini. He ain't here. Hey, hey you, Rummy. Didn't I tell you never to come panhandling around here? George, look. Oh, it's Mr. Gower. Hey, Mr. Gower. Well, listen, Mr. Gower, don't you know me? This is George Bailey. You... You, you buy me a drink, mister? Just, just, just one drink, will you, mister? Binky? Yeah, Nick? Throw the rummy out. 
Oh, uh, no, no, please. Hey, bartender, that's Mr. Gower, the druggist. That rumhead spent 20 years in prison for poisoning a kid. If you know him, you must be a Delbreed yourself. Binky, here's two more. Throw them out. Sure, this way, gentlemen. Hey, look at me. I'm giving out wings. <laughs> oh, George. Get up, George. Good thing he threw us in a snowbank, huh? Where's... Where's Mr. Gower? Mr. Gower doesn't know you, George. You see, you weren't there to stop him from putting that poison into that prescription. What do you mean I wasn't there? Look, tell me, what are you, a hypnotist? George. Well, why am I seeing things here? Don't you understand? It's because you were not born. Well, then if I wasn't born, who am I? Nobody. You have no identity. What do you mean I have no identity? No papers, no driver's license, no 4F card, no insurance policy. Zuzu's bell. What? Zuzu's bell. I bought my little girl a bell to hang on the Christmas tree, and I forgot to give it to her. Here, I've got it in my... Well, it's gone. It's gone, too. Everything's gone. But you've been given a great gift, George. A chance to see what the world would be like if you'd never been born. You're crazy. Yeah, you're crazy as bedbug, and you're driving me crazy, too. Now, look, I'm going home to see my wife and family. Do you understand that? And I'm going home alone. Better not leave him alone, Clarence. Oh, Joseph. Oh, I'll stay near him, sir. Poor George. He's seeing Main Street now the way it'd be if he hadn't lived. The thing that's really shocked him, sir, is the building and loan office. Know what's there now? A pawn shop. What's he doing? Can you see? He's talking to Ernie Bishop, the taxi driver. He wants to go home. Oh, you'd better take along, Clarence. Oh, I will, sir. I will. Come on, step on it, will you, Ernie? Get me home. I'm off my nut. Where do you live, buddy? Oh, now, doggone it, Ernie. Don't you start pulling that stuff on me. A 320 sycamore. 320 sycamore? Yeah, yeah. Hurry up, Zuzu's sick. Okay, buddy. Hey, look, Ernie. I don't know what's happened. I'm going crazy or something. I've got some bad liquor. Now, look, tell me this. You're Ernie Bishop, right? And you live with your wife and kids You've seen my wife? What do you mean? I've seen your wife. I've been to your house a hundred times. What do you mean? We built it for you, didn't we? My wife took up with a kid and ran away five years ago. And I ain't never seen you before in my life, see? Okay, Ernie. Okay, okay. Just step on it. Get me home. Mary! Mary, where are you? Janie, Petey, Zuzu. Zuzu, where are you? This is just an old abandoned house, George. You have no wife, no children. Where are they? What are you doing with them? There you are, Bert. I told you. All right, put up your hands. Oh, Bert, Bert, the cop. Thank heaven you're here. Look, now why don't you be a good fella and we'll take you in to see a doctor? Bert, now, Bert, now listen to me. Uh, what's the matter with you guys? Uh, now listen, it's that fella there. He says he's an angel. He tried to hypnotize me. I hate to use my nightstick, but I guess I ought to... Ow! Ow! Run! George, run! He can't hit you while I'm uh, fighting him! George, run! My teeth aren't what they used to be! Joseph, help! Joseph! Joseph! Where'd they go? Ernie, where'd they go? I, I don't know. They just disappeared. Clarence! Oh, Joseph, I hope you don't mind my calling on you like I did. It was very irregular, Clarence. You're by yourself again. He's at his mother's house, sir. Well, if George hasn't been born, then he has no mother. Uh, he's being very stubborn, sir. He'll just have to find out these things for himself. But his mother? That's a terribly bitter blow for a man. His own mother not knowing him. You mean, you mean, I shouldn't have let him... I mean, you'd better find him right away. Oh, and stop biting policemen, Clarence. I'm here again, George. My mother. My own mother didn't know me. If only Harry were here. If only my brother were back from Washington. Your brother fell through the ice and drowned at the age of nine. That's a lie. He got the Congressional Medal of Honor. He saved the life of every man on that transport. Every man on that transport died. Strange, isn't it? Each man's life touches so many other lives. Harry wasn't there to save them because... You weren't there to save Harry. Don't you see, George? You really had a wonderful life. 
Don't you see what a mistake it would be to throw it away? Clarence? Yes? Where's Mary? Please, where's my wife? I, I'm, I'm not supposed to tell. Tell me where she is. You're not going to like it, George. Where is she? Now, I'll choke it out of you if I have to. Where's my wife? <laughs> the library. She works there. She's just about to lock up for the night, so I, uh... George! George, come back! Oh, there must be some easier way for me to get my wings. Mary, Mary! Oh, I'm sorry, but the library's closed. Mary, it's George. Don't you know me? No, I don't know you. Let go of me! Mary, please, don't do this to me. Mary, please help me, help me. Where are our kids? I need you, Mary. Get away from me! Please! Please, help! Oh, help me! Help, help me, me Mary! Help. Mary, I'm George! Help. Mary! <gasps> Clarence! Oh, where is he, Joseph? Where's George? I'm afraid I've lost him, sir. You knew you shouldn't have let him try to see Mary. Now they're after him! A mob! They think he was trying to hurt her. Oh, Joseph, I won't even get one wing, will I? You have one more chance, Clarence. Get over to the bridge by the river. I think George has seen just about enough. But, but the mob. Oh, don't worry. They've lost him too. Now, hurry up. Oh, thank you, Joseph, thank you. Clarence, 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 where are you? Oh, help me, Clarence. Get me back. I don't care what happens to me. Only get me back to my wife and kids. Please. I want to live again. I want to live again. Please, God, let me live again. George? Is that you down there, George? Oh, now get out of here, Bert. Get out of here. You come any closer and I'll let you have it. What the Sam Hill you yelling for, George? Come on now. Uh... George? George? Bert, do you know me? Know you? I've been looking all over town for you. Where you been? Hey, Bert. Bert, I'm alive again, Bert. You sure you're all right? Hey, your mouth's bleeding. <laughs> it is. Hey, my mouth is bleeding. Bert, look at the blood come out of there, would you? And Zuzu's Christmas ball, Bert. I had him right in my pocket. Here it is. Hey, it's in my pocket. What do you know about that? Hey, Merry Christmas, Bert. Well, Merry Christmas. Get in the car. I'll drive you home. You will, Bert? Will you do that? And turn the sirens wide open, huh? Merry Christmas, Bedford Falls. Merry Christmas, old building and loan. Merry Christmas, Mr. Potter. Merry Christmas, movie house. Come on, hey, Bert. Come on with me, huh? What are these people? They're reporters? Oh, Merry Christmas, reporters. Hey, Mr. Bank Examiner, Merry Christmas. Mr. Bailey, there's a deficit. I know, $8,000, I bet, huh? George, I've got a little paper here. I'm sorry. Oh, I'll bet it's a warrant for my arrest. Isn't it wonderful? Oh, Merry Christmas. Mary, oh, Mary, do you know where Mary is? Oh, look at this old drafty house. Isn't it wonderful? Well, have you seen my wife? Where's Mary? Mary! Daddy, 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 Daddy Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas, Daddy! Oh, kids. Hey, kids, Janie, Petey. Oh, I could eat you up. Where's your mother? She went looking for you, Daddy, with Uncle Billy. Daddy! Zuzu, my little ginger snap. How do you feel? Fine. Not a smitch of temperature. Not a smitch of temperature. Hallelujah. George, George, darling! Mary. George, where have you been? Mary, Mary, look, I just need to hold you. Oh, George, George. Oh, you're real, Mary. You have no idea what's happened to me. You have no idea what's happened either. They're on their way here. Who? Who's on their way? Uh, the police department, the FBI, the National Guard? Well, it doesn't matter. I'm alive again, Mary. Listen, Mary, I'm alive oh, again. Yes. Oh, yes, darling. Now close your eyes and come on downstairs. What is it? Can I open my eyes yet, Mary? What's going on here? No, just keep your eyes closed. I'll walk you over by the Christmas tree well, people, and... I hear lots of people. What is it? There's people. Just one minute now. We're all ready now, Uncle Billy. Come on in, everybody. <laughs> George! George, look! Just look! Uncle Billy. Money, George. A laundry basket filled with money. Money for you. Mary did it, George. Mary! What is that? What money? People were hurt. You were in trouble, darling. And these people, your friends, they collected this money for you. The $8,000. Uh, Charlie, and hey, there's Martini, and Mr. Gower. Hey, how are you, Mr. Gower? Um, 
Mrs. Thompson and Ed, Tom, everybody. None of us would have a roof over our heads if it wasn't for you, George. Oh, this is wonderful. Hey, Mary, look, look who's coming in. Mother. Hi, Mother. Hey, and Harry. Well, I got Mary's telegram, George. I flew in as fast as I could. Hey, everybody, a toast. How about a toast? Yeah, good idea, Ernie. A toast to my big brother, George, the richest man in town. <laughs> Forget. Here, honey, here's your bell. Daddy! Darling, what's this on the table here? What's this book? Oh, The Adventures of Tom Sawyer. There's something written in it. Dear George, remember, no man is a failure who has friends. Thanks for the wings, pal. Love, Clarence. Clarence? Yeah, he's a very dear friend of mine. Teacher says every time a bell rings, an angel gets his wings. That's right, Zuzu. That's right, that's right. Attaboy, Clarence. Attaboy. Happy landings. What a sweet ending to an amazing story, huh, Phil? Truly heartwarming. Puts me in the holiday spirit. We here at the BSM Spirit Shop would like to thank whatever guardian angel brought you home safely tonight to join us around the radio with your family. And if your radiator's not keeping up, don't forget, BSM Spirit Shop has plenty of wool blankets to keep you and your whole family cozy. Until next time, thank you and good night. <laughs>